Hello everyone, my name is Joshua and I am an amateur banjo player and I wanted to make a very focused video on how to play the claw hammer style. I have a longer version of this, I'll post it, but I just want to kind of jump right into it. So, for those who, they, this is what they care about, this is what they want to learn quickly. Um, the claw hammer style gets its name from the hand position that you have when you're strumming, like a claw. Not like this kind of claw where you're going meow. Everything's together. I have short nails, longer nails help, but I have really short nails and I just keep them that way. So driving, diving right in, everybody, if you've looked up a video before about this, they talk about the bum, diddy, bum, diddy, bum, diddy, bum, diddy. That's, you know, one way to explain it. Um, but it typically looks like this. So it's bum, diddy, bum, diddy, bum, diddy, bum, diddy, bum, diddy. That's one way. We're going to break this down, okay? In general, you should practice your wrist movement. If you have your banjo or guitar, just practice this with your thumb out, your fingers together. There's no gap there, you know, no gap. It's, it's my fingers are together, 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 together. I don't use a pick, right? We don't use finger picks. We don't use a bow. This is all, all your hand. So turning here, what I like to practice first is the strum. Have all three or four of your fingers, including your pinky, strum the banjo. Get used to this, okay? Speed will come. You have to take it slow. It is very frustrating. And I have videos of me learning how frustrating it was. Work on your form. Keep your hand tight. Get used to your fingers touching the strings, your nails strumming across them. Get used to that if you're doing open G. Get used to that open G sound. Okay. Once you've done this literally 10,000 times and you're like, okay, I need to learn something new. What you do then, and remember, you're four, my hands are, my, my nails are exposed. So when I'm strumming, it's like that, like that. Sorry, let me get for the camera like that. Strumming. It's in the form of a claw, okay? I flick my wrist. So when you're ready to learn something new, you're gonna rest your thumb then on the fifth string. You're gonna strum, catch your thumb. It needs to be blocked. And then you pop up. Now I'll talk about the pop in a second, but just get used to practicing this. Have your thumb just catch. Now how this pop works is, for example, if I come on softly and come off softly, nothing really happens. You do hear a slight ping there. Now you can do the ping one of two ways. You can release quickly. This is a gentle ping. Very gentle. But if you flick your thumb out just ever so slightly, and this string, as you know, it is bending down. But if you bend down and when you come up, you just flick it, you hear that sharper ping. That's what people hear when you do the claw hammer. I'm gonna do open G. My thumb just comes out ever so slightly to give a pop on that fifth string, this G string. So what you're going to do is you're going to practice strumming first, a thousand, a hundred, ten thousand, a million, and you're just going to strum and you're going to get used to this. And then you're going to have your finger pop. You're going to have your thumb catch, your thumb should be out. Not fully extended like this, you won't catch it properly. You want the fingertip of your thumb always in there. Don't worry about the angle, don't worry about how much, whatever feels comfortable. You wanna make sure you're pushing, you wanna feel that resistance from the string. Because that resistance, once you let go, it's gonna come up. 
And so this string is about a half inch off of the drum. Like I said, I push down, almost touching the fourth string, and I come out, I mean, just the, the slightest bit and pop. That's how I do it. That may work for, you, work for you, but focus on strumming and getting your thumb caught. And again, do this another hundred, thousand, ten thousand times. And you can hear it. You can hear my thumb catching the back of the drum. Don't worry about that. You'll worry about that later, okay? Get used to just the placement. Now, the final part, the tap, right? What you want to do is you want to use either your index finger or your ring finger. And you want to tap the string, whatever feels natural. For me, I can actually feel my ring finger just barely grazing the string when I tap. It doesn't do anything to meet the sound, it's just how I strum. So just get used to however you do it, whether it's index, I'm actually got my index on it or your, your middle finger. Figure out what makes the most sense, but keep your fingers together, okay? I'm alternating right now. I do alternate sometimes, depending on the song, because I need a louder strum or strike on the chord or the string. So anyways, work on finding what feels comfortable. And then what you do is you tap with whichever finger, tap, and I'm doing it on the first string, which is D. So you'll tap in the claw hammer fashion, tap, 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 and then strum. You should already have this thumb part caught, pop, tap, strum, Tap, strum, pop. 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 It takes literally about a month to get there, guys. Practice is everything, okay? I don't want to belabor this video but it's pretty much that simple you break it up into three parts the technique of the strum your wrist get used to flicking your wrist get used to strumming get used to having your thumb caught on the fifth string and however you pop off and this would be the fourth part actually and then tapping and striking the string and once you have accuracy tap Strum, pop, tap, strum, pop, tap, strum, pop, tap, strum, pop, tap. That's the bum ditty. And you normally go slowly again, another hundred, thousand, ten thousand times. Get used to just going slow. Work your way up the strings. Really, that's pretty straightforward. And then work on speed. You work on speed, you'll get there. Whether you blur it all together, kind of, or you get really exact. That's it. So guys, I just want to reiterate, it's going to take time. It's going to take a thousand tries, 10,000 tries a month to really get it down until we're comfortable. And that is my technique for teaching the straw, uh, claw hammer banjo. My name is Joshua. I started a year ago in 2020, March of 2020. And I just wanted to share this video because I think there should be more banjo players in the world. Uh, whether you play bluegrass or you play Irish folk or just reggae, if you play anything but bluegrass, that's perfectly fine as well. But just remember guys, it's really the flick of the wrist, the strumming with your fingers, 
catching with your thumb and then striking the string you want. And that comes with time, practice, knowing your banjo and accuracy. All right, guys, take care, and I'll see you on the next one.